We're going to answer the question, is saving money enough? The answer might surprise you. We do this every Friday for two reasons. One, motivate you to get rid of high interest rate debt. It's crushing people. And two, explain savings and the fact that the U.S. dollar goes down in value due to inflation. So what can you do? Let's get into it first. Before we go over what we do every Friday, which is we look at the value of assets compared to the dollar. In other words, instead of just saving dollars that go down in value due to inflation, why not save assets? And to drive that point home, every Friday we look at and we've been benchmarking it against February of this year when I started these Friday shows. What were the prices back in February and what are the prices now? And would you have been better off just stuffing your bank account with dollars or possibly putting it into other investments? What are they? How can you diversify? And I always have to say, this is just for informational purposes only. I'm not a financial advisor. Let's just start real quick with things that I would say you can't control, but might frustrate you and give some people anxiety. And then let's talk about what you can do and what you can control, because in life, you can only control what you can control. All right. The U.S. economy in general, you've probably seen this. Maybe you haven't. It all depends on, I guess, what news sources you look at. But check this out. Biggest market bubble in history. This was October 3rd. Today's the 4th is about to burst. This particular economist predicts a looming recession where even the Fed will not be able to save the economy. So there are those that are saying, hey, we might be headed for a recession. There are many signs that are showing that. Can we get ourselves out of it? Can we have a soft landing or a hard landing? Which basically means, is a recession going to hit hard and fast or is it just going to be kind of slow and not that deep? Okay. Another headline, America headed for bank. The U.S. national debt skyrockets $200 billion dollars in a day. Now, you might think big deal, the US can print money, that sort of thing. It is a big deal. Printing money causes inflation and debt hurts people. Federal US debt hurts you in many different ways. I've done videos on that before. Then you've got individuals like Elon Musk, America headed for bankruptcy, five reasons why he might be correct. Okay. And let's look at the debt of countries. Last thing. Here it is. I like this site because they put things in visual form. They're saying these are countries that are in good positions regarding their debt to GDP and that sort of thing. The best one is Saudi Arabia, Germany, Indonesia, blah, blah, blah. Goes down the list and then debt burden of major nations. Here's even more info. Well, these are the ones not doing so well. Countries debt burden by looking at the scale of deficits, debt service costs related to GDP and credit ratings. The worst is the United States of all these countries. These are doing well, these not so well, and we are at the bottom. Okay, so things aren't looking up. That could mean that there's more job losses. That could mean that there's continued inflation. You name it. So what can you do? So here we are. If you see the chart on the right, the first thing we look at is what if you just save dollars? So typically look at three things. The FDIC puts this out once a month. Savings around half a percent. So you're just putting dollars in the bank. What are you going to get back? Three-month CDs around 2%. And I know you might get a little higher of a savings rate at the moment as if you put, a, put in a certain amount of money or they want to get, have you open a new account, whatever it may be. But just know those things can go away at a heartbeat. Now, if you lock up money like in a three-month CD, you're going to get that for three months no matter what. Three-month treasury around 5.21. One-month 5.4 is about the best you're going to get. So compare that to the fact that inflation is around, depends on what you're buying, they say it's around 2 to 3%. I think in many of the things that we need on a daily basis, it's significantly more than that. Gas was is way up compared to what it used to be. It hasn't gone down at all. Okay, so let's start talking about assets. So if you had taken some of those dollars, of course, have your emergency fund and your day-to-day -day expenses, but in terms of your savings, what the rich do is they buy assets because over time, due to inflation, the dollar goes down. This is what I always discuss. And assets over time go up. I'll show you some charts. But here we go, gold, 2661, up substantially since last February. You see that here on the chart. Silver, 32. That's a 50% gain. Okay, so if you put $1,000 in the bank back in February, now you would have $1,000 plus a little interest. But if you put $1,000 into silver, it would now be worth $1,500. That's a significant difference, okay? That's what assets can do for you. 
Then we look at crypto, love it, hate it, whatever you may think. It's up since the beginning of the year. Bitcoin, Ethereum as well. They've been going up, they've been going down. That's what assets do. That's why you like to diversify. Because if you ever have to sell assets and turn them into dollars, you want to hopefully not do it when the asset price is deflated. You want to do it when the asset price is high. So some of these assets work sort of opposite one another. Let's look at the Dow Jones. So that's 30 stocks. Now, I should say, if I get back here, and I'll, I'll discuss this at the end, but you might say, well, buying gold's a pain. Go buy physical gold or buying physical silver. Or how do I even get something like a Bitcoin or Ethereum? Well, all of these four things now have what are called ETFs, exchange traded funds. You can just go onto your broker and buy them just like you would a stock and sell them just like you would a stock. You don't have to hold physical gold and silver. You don't have to know how to own Bitcoin. You may want to do that, but just to get started, you can do all of this quite simply through your broker in an ETF. Dow Jones, 30. It's 30 stocks. Up, down, up, down, but over time it goes up. So if you look here just in the last year, it's up 27%. But just to show you, this goes back to 1985, and I've been alive this entire time. It was at $1,000, 1000 184. Now it's up to 42,000. That's a 3,500% gain. You can buy ETFs that mimic these 30 stocks. In other words, you don't have the money maybe to buy 30 of these stocks and to try to figure out which ones to buy and sell. They do it for you. You just buy that one ETF, S&P 500. I've said this before, the S&P 500, many books have been written about it. A lot of people say, you know what? If you don't want to get involved in stocks, just buy the S&P 500. A lot of people can't beat the returns. So what's happened in the last year, last year, over time, here we are back to 1997, 96, 750, and now it's up to 5,700. That's a 600% gain. As you can see, times when it goes down, times it goes up, times it goes down. What I do is I dollar cost average. That just means that every month I'm buying a little bit of all of these things. Buy a little bit of the gold ETF, a little bit of the silver ETF, a little bit of the S&P 500, a little bit of the Dow Jones, and over time, your prices, obviously, as it goes up and down, will stabilize. Okay, so that just shows you that assets over time go up while the dollar, because of inflation, goes down in value, meaning it's buying you less. You know this. It's been proven that just two, three years ago, a new car averaged $30,000, now average $40,000. It's a 30% gain. Average home, $300,000, now $400,000, a 30% gain. Were your dollars in the bank over the last two or three years? Did they go up by 30% or more? No. If you're just sitting on interest, but if you had assets, yes. Over the last year, 34% for the S&P 500. Silver was 50%. So yes, you'd be keeping up and way beating inflation. Okay, now let's look at some of the things that help us understand where the economy is. There's a two-year treasury. They look at the two-year and they look at the 10-year. Two-year at the moment, 3.9%. That's what the government's giving you when they're basically borrowing money from you. 10-year, 3.96. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we look at this chart, and I've talked about this before, which shows you the what they call the inversion. You know that if you get a three-month CD and you get a year CD, you're expecting a higher interest rate on the year. Well, for a while, when it's below this black line, that wasn't happening. You're getting a higher yield on the shorter term, which doesn't make any sense. That's called an inversion. That's happened for a while. And whenever we pop out of conversion, which we inversion, which we did recently, in the past, that has been a negative thing. Oh, I've shown this before. All these gray lines are when bad things happen in the economy. And it's usually when you see inversion, you come out, bad times. Inversion, come out, bad times. Inversion, come out, bad times. We just came out. Could it be bad times? Maybe. We're seeing layoffs. We're seeing possibility of the markets correcting and having issues. So generally speaking, what does that really mean? Well, it could mean that if you're buying assets and things now, they might go down in value over the next year, two years, five years. Corrections happen, but over the long term, over a long period of time, like if you look at the, the Dow Jones, you see that, yeah, it's got sideways movement. It's got downward movement, but it goes up again. It's got really downward movement, 2008, and then it goes up. It's got really downward movement, and then it goes up. But as you see, up and to the right. Dollar, constantly down. I've got a chart that shows over the last 100 years, the dollar lost 99% of its value. And I have a video 
that shows if you had bought gold 100 years ago instead of dollars, you would have substantially more money if you bought gold instead of holding dollars. Okay, if you just simply go to Google, Yahoo Finance, whatever, you'll see, this is just an example, SPY is very popular. I've bought it, I've bought it for my kids. It's just uh, an ETF that mimics the S&P 500. So that way you can just, to give you an idea, you can look up ETFs for gold, for silver, for Bitcoin, for Ethereum, for the S&P 500, for the Dow Jones, and you can very easily move in and out of these things. So I hope this was helpful. I always try to point out with this show that dollars go down in value, regardless of what's going on with the government and that sort of thing. If you can own assets, that's the best you can do over a long-term period of time. It's better to own assets than it is to own dollars. A lot of people will tell you that, and I'm trying to show you by doing that every Friday over a period of time, and then show you how you can easily purchase those same types of assets and not really have to do a lot. In other words, just buy ETFs. If you want to dig in more and get individual stocks or individual commodities, you can do that. So try to eliminate that high interest rate debt. You can control that. Get rid of the credit card debt. When you invest, look to diversify. That's what I do. Because generally speaking, those are the only things you can really control is what you do with your debt and your investments. Whether or not the federal government keeps going into debt and makes your dollar worth less constantly is not something you can control. So do what you can. Don't freak out. Just have a long-term plan. Have your emergency savings. Have your investments. And make sure you're putting at least a little bit of time every month to just keep an eye on what's going on and how you're doing. Have a great day. I hope this is helpful. And on my channel, I have many videos on ways to get out of debt. So please take a look and I hope it'll be helpful to you as well as the calculators that I have. And there's links below in the description. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.